I've got a lot of news today, but obviously the big news uh, was the election last night. And uh, number one, obviously, in the Republican side, Don- Donald Trump really looks like he's opened up a pathway to uh, the first the, the first ballot on the Republican convention. We'll see. But, you know, there are many Democratic strategists and many on the on the on the left, as it were, who are saying, well, if Trump is the nominee, that's a good thing. Because he'll be the easiest to beat. I I say not so fast. You know, we said the same thing about Ronald Reagan in 1980. He was that wacky governor from from uh, California who had, you know, uh, just gone full Goldwater or even worse. And he had these insane ideas. I mean, the guy who was running against him in the primary in 1980, George Herbert Walker Bush, called Reagan's political ideas voodoo economics, as you as you'll recall, just like they're making fun of Donald Trump right now. But, you know, looks like he's going that way. On the Democratic side, it's it's a little more uh, it's a little more cut and dried, I guess, a little more clear. Uh, Bernie lost by what, 11, 12 points points. It was a substantial loss in in New York yesterday. Uh, He got 57. uh, Excuse me. Clinton got 57.9 percent. Sanders got 42.1 percent. So Hillary Clinton added 72 delegates to her total. Now, that's that's going to make it. Uh, by the way, Trump won 60 and a half percent, 88 delegates. Um, that's going to make it damn near impossible for Bernie to win based on pledged delegates. And in fact, I just got an email from the Sanders campaign. And within a minute of it, I got an email from the Clinton campaign. <laughs> and these are your, you know, uh, on the ground fundraising emails. You probably all got them, too. Um, or at least one or the other, if you've signed up with one comp- one campaign or the other. And the one from the Bernie campaign was saying, basically, we're going to try to make this with superdelegates, which I, you know, I take as sort of an ad- admission is probably the wrong word, but an acknowledgement, let's say, that the path to getting the most pledged delegates is is ex- insanely difficult, shall we say. And, and I would say it's it's nearly impossible, given that the next couple of primaries coming up, I mean, California, Bernie might win. But you've got a, a couple of states coming up, particularly Maryland and Pennsylvania, that are, you know, that are closed primaries. I'm not sure about Maryland. Pennsylvania is. And, and in Maryland, uh, Bernie's down over 20 points or was as of yesterday. So it seems like, I, you know, I, 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 let me mix a couple of messages here for you. Number one, I think it's time for the Democratic Party and for Democrats and progressives and independents who believe in the values of Democrats and progressives. I think it's time for all of us to seriously come together and and work forward for the goals and causes that we all share, number one. Now, how do you do that if Bernie continues going all the way to the convention, which he's going to do? I think that the we all need to take a step back and, and just look at this with a with a, uh, a dispassionate eye, Bernie from the very beginning has been leading a movement more than a candidacy. You can hear him give an entire speech and never once use the words I or me. In fact, he very rarely uses those words. Bernie has been pushing a movement. And if he wants to continue that movement all the way to the convention, I'm with him. And I think, you know, probably most people who support him are. But He should take Hillary out of his vocabulary, in my opinion. In fact, I think and 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 he should be going after the Republicans and he should be pushing his core issues. This is just my personal opinion. I'm not a campaign advisor. I'm not even sure that they listen to me or this show. But this is my take on it, is that I think the Sanders campaign actually began to stumble after their big victory in Wisconsin when the Clinton campaign came out with this. This, uh, you know, uh, discredit, uh, uh, you know, thing of Bernie, you know, we're going to discredit him and then we're going to and then we're going to pick up the pieces afterwards. Um, The you know, I get that from the Clinton campaign. Uh, What surprised me was that the Bernie campaign reacted so strongly to it. And Bernie running around saying, I get disqualify him was the word. And, And Bernie running around saying, no, no, Hillary's disqualified uh, because of her vote in Iraq or, you know, et cetera. I think if both these candidates, Hillary and Bernie, both started going after the Republicans, Bernie, 
Bernie continue to build his movement? Because as the New York Times pointed out today in their lead editorial by the editors of the New York Times itself, no uh, you know, lefty institution, the New York Times. I mean, you can argue that the editorial board leans to the left, as in the Democratic, capital D Democratic Party. But they are certainly not, you know, the New York Times editorial board, certainly not a bunch of progressives. And, and they wrote, the headline is, Sanders and Kasich should ignore any pressure to quit. This is the editorial board. This isn't, you know, Maureen Dowd or Paul Krugman or, or you know, Mr. David Brooks or whatever. And here's what they said. Mr. Stan Mr. Sanders has always stood more for a vision than for reality, especially with the Republican-led Congress. As he and Mrs. Clinton tore into each other in last week's debate in Brooklyn, some Democrats worried that the nasty fracas would hurt the party. Others want Mr. Sanders to get out and let Mrs. Clinton focus on the Trump threat. Mr. Sanders' presence has made this an immeasurably more substantive race. And I believe both candidates would agree with that in which both candidates' policies have been better vetted and, as a result, better delineated. And they're pointing out this has actually been a really good thing for Hillary Clinton. And, and it's also, it also has demonstrated to the Clinton campaign how you can win the general election, which is by bringing along all those Bernie people. Now, you're not going to do that if between now and the time that Bernie drops out, you go trashing them, which is why I'm saying that, you know, the, this, was, this was my... In fact, actually, the New York Times ends this. They say this could be a, this should be a wake up call to leaders of both parties. They are missing something big about their own members' priorities and their mood. A spirited nominating season might teach them what voters actually want from their president. So, a yeah, in all probability, the the, the math is really skewing against Bernie right now, and and he's saying, or his campaign is saying, basically their strategy is going to be to go after super delegates. I don't think they're going to have any success with that, but who knows? It, it's not over till it's over. First of all, but secondly, and this this goes back to the rant that I did last week about Wetico, about the Native Americans. They were confronted with three choices when they were faced with psychopathic Europeans. Number one, run. Number two, fight. Excuse me, number, number two, uh, stand your ground and die. And number three, fight back using the techniques of your, of your opponent. And when the, the Clinton campaign started using essentially personal attacks against the Sanders campaign and using ad hominems as they were doing even yesterday... Um, the, Clinton, the Sanders campaign responded in kind, which at the time I, I said on this program I thought was a mistake. I think, frankly, attacking Hillary probably lost Bernie votes in New York State. And I think he needs to go relentlessly positive, which is where he was before Wisconsin, by and large, other than during the debates. And I think that Hillary needs to do the same and, and, and begin moving rapidly away from the third, world, third, third way policies, the DLC policies, and take George Clooney's advice, who just raised all that money for her, raised 15 million bucks for her. And that is start working to get money out of politics, which she has endorsed. But start aggressively working in that direction. I, you know, and yeah, these are Bernie's policy prescriptions, but I, I think, and, 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 and instead of moving to the center, I think what Hillary Clinton's candidacy needs to do, or campaign needs to do, is embrace those independents who have come along with Bernie, and frankly, move to the left for the general election. I think she has a much, you know, the Bernie candidacy has demonstrated that, that whoever the nominee is, and it's probably going to be Hillary now, that with regard to trade, unions, wages, Citizens United, fracking, military adventurism, it's time to take more progressive positions. This is the Tom Hartman Program. And if both of them would do that, it would bring this party together, and I think that that would be a good thing, even though the campaigns are going to continue to the convention. To watch more clips from our programs, hit the Watch More Videos button over here, and please be sure to hit the handy-dandy subscribe button so you'll always be up to date. Tag, you're it.